What we are going to discuss are handgun bullets and their effectiveness. Which bullet types and calibers are effective and which are not effective, and most importantly, why? But first, we must have a clear answer to a crucial question. What is the purpose of a bullet? Now, before we can define that purpose, we must understand the context in which this definition is made. Our context here is not one of target shooting, cartridge collecting, or even hunting. It is the use of firearms against human beings. To be more specific, it is the use of bullets by law enforcement, military, or law-abiding private citizens in self-defense or in the defense of others. Now, with that context made clear, we can define the true purpose of a bullet. A bullet's function is to incapacitate a person. In the technical sense, to incapacitate someone is to disable him, to prevent him from acting out his will. In real life, the most common and crucial situation requiring incapacitation is one in which you are trying to prevent a criminal from utilizing a firearm or, or other deadly weapon to injure someone. And in such a situation, the incapacitation of a bad guy must be as close to instantaneous as possible, as it only takes a fraction of a second for a trigger to be pulled. As most of you are aware, the fact is that the only way to quickly and effectively incapacitate a person is to kill him with a bullet. Now that may sound primitive and, and savage, but the truth is there are many situations in which there is no other method. Yes, you've all heard about, about tranquilizer darts, nets, electric stun guns, tasers, and tear gas, and so on. And while there are situations in which such non-lethal devices can be practically used, there are too many situations, and I'm sure you can all think of several, in which a bullet is the only option. Now that we're talking about bullets, let's discuss the myth of shooting to wound as opposed to shooting to kill. Attempting to shoot someone with the intention of only wounding him is a very difficult and risky feat. You may, you may miss what you're aiming at, and you may hit a vital spot, and you may, or you may inflict a wound which will prove to be fatal later on in spite of medical intervention. The real problem with shooting to wound is that doing so will not likely cause the individual to immediately stop whatever it is that he is doing or threatening to do. And if the bad guy is not doing or about to do something which requires immediate incapacitation, then why should anyone be shooting at him? The point is, if someone warrants being shot, the purpose should be to immediately incapacitate him. And if there are any of you out there who wonder, as did a reporter I once spoke to when I was a police officer, why we can't just shoot the gun out of the bad guy's hand instead of shooting him, well, all I can say is that you watch too much TV and you need more basic familiarization with firearms than I can provide here. Now, if anyone has any doubts about the need, the legitimate need, for a bullet which can cause sudden or instant incapacitation, then listen carefully to the details of the famous 1986 Miami FBI shootout. The FBI was after two men who had been committing numerous violent armored car and bank robberies, as well as several homicides. These two criminals were known to be well-armed and to be likely to use their weapons to resist arrest. The FBI agents, through good basic police work, were able to spot the two bad guys driving a stolen vehicle, the owner of which they'd shot and left for dead. With a total of eight FBI agents and five cars, they forced the bad guy's vehicle to stop in an attempt to make the arrest. The two criminals were not intimidated by the numbers against them. They immediately opened fire. A long, intense gun battle resulted between the FBI agents and the two bad guys, the full story of which is truly gripping and dramatic. But the key point is this. Very early in the battle, right in the beginning, one of the bad guys was hit with a 9mm silver tip hollow point. The bullet entered his chest through his arm, into his chest this way, and causing a, what the coroner later called a non-survivable wound. This means the wound he received was such that had he been taken immediately to a hospital, he still would have died, eventually. But the fact is that after being shot, he was able to run for cover, fire back, make a firing assault on two agents behind a car some 40 feet away, get into an FBI car, start the engine, get back out of the car, run to another agent, fire at him point blank, get back in the car, and try to drive away. 
Now, he was then killed by a very brave agent who ran up right to him and put two 357 Magnum rounds into his chest and one into his head, which, which did stop him. But the important point is that after being shot the first time, this criminal was able to operate very effectively for at least four minutes, in which he fired approximately 40 rounds, killing two FBI agents and wounding four others. The truth is that had that first shot been truly effective, the bad guy would have been stopped right in the beginning, and those two agents would have lived, and those other agents would not have been wounded. If that bullet had been good enough to do what it was supposed to do, that man would have been stopped right in the beginning. And by the way, for those interested, a later analysis of the bad guy's blood, that number one bad guy, showed no trace of alcohol or any drugs. What he did, he did on pure, sober determination. Now that we all understand that my purpose here is to discuss situations in which firearms are needed to cause an immediate incapacitation, the question becomes one of how this can be achieved. Before we get into the physiological effects of bullets, let's examine some of the least understood and yet very important psychological effects. Now, one of the best and most knowledgeable authorities in the field of wound ballistics is Colonel Martin Fackler, MD, a military surgeon with substantial combat surgery experience and a lifelong shooter. Now, Dr. Fackler, a board certified general surgeon, fellow of the American College of Surgeons and all that sort of stuff, is the director of the Wound Ballistic Laboratory of the U.S. Army's Military Trauma Research Division at the Letterman Army Institute of Research. Now, he has been studying gunshot wounds full-time for the last six years, and there, there are not many people in the world with his experience on the subject. Dr. Fackler has probably done more than any other single person to correct an enormous amount of misinformation on what bullets will and won't do to the body. He's also interested in the psychological effects of being shot. So there's a minimal difference, but what's causing these people to fall over immediately? It's, I'm, I'm sure it's the, uh, the psychogenic aspect that, oh my God, I've been shot, and I know I'm, I'm going to fall over, maybe, maybe so I don't get shot anymore, or maybe uh, I'm so convinced that I'm going to die when I've been shot that maybe I will. I mean, there are instances, uh, um, there are instances in the literature where people are dead with shots that shouldn't have killed them. There's an old, uh, uh, Dr. Trunkey uh, pointed one out to me in a paper he wrote called George Goodfellow, First Civilian Trauma Surgeon. It was a doctor who was a, took care of the people in the Wild West at the OK Corral who were, who were shot. And he had an instance of, uh, it was 45 Colt they were being shot with. And the fellow who was shot through and the fellow in back of him got the same bullet in his thigh. Uh, the wound in the thigh was basically insignificant, but the fellow died. And the, the doctor remarked he, he was scared to death. And I think there is a, a real large factor here. We've grown up watching television and seeing movies where people are shot and immediately they're knocked over and they're dead. And it is so ingrained, almost like a uh, uh, hypnotic suggestion type effect, that I'm convinced there are a lot of people that just the fact that they're hit by a bullet in the torso are going to fall over. And several police uh, groups that I've lectured to have brought up, independently brought up the same, the same thing in that they say, we notice a real big difference in the effects of our weapons on the ordinary person as opposed to the person who is high on drugs or the person who is psychotic and crazy. These persons, these persons don't, have the, don't have the brain telling them your shot fall over, and so they don't. The range of psychogenic reactions to being shot are extremely wide. There are some people who will faint upon having a firearm pointed at them. There are others who will drop instantly at the sound of a shot. And there are some who will fall to their knees and cry hysterically upon receiving the slightest of superficial wounds. Now, law enforcement experts who have studied the subject generally agree that about 40% of people who are shot will react that way. They will immediately fall down upon being shot. Now, some because they want to and some because they have to. 
But such reactions are certainly not predictable or expectable. What you 